Okay guys, so in the last video, that was I know pretty much quite hardest part of this whole series that, that was creating our own custom directives using our custom methods in our, our directive.js file that we have here. And we also created this class that we registered that directive and use are now using in our post.js. So remember in the last video, if I go to base type definition in the type definition for the user JS, we created this called user authenticated user. So where this at uh, this access, we just want to get give, give uh, authenticated user based on the token. So we were not done yet just yet. And in our resolvers and our authenticated user, I am gonna just now do the you get the user authenticated users profile. And the way we can do that by simply let's see what we can do. Auth user profile. I'm going to name it profile so that it doesn't match with the downward. So I'm going to copy this. Say this and uh, not par file. That will be profile. It's going to copy, save it, and create a new method. And that will be our asynchronous method. And we'll see one by async and then by default this will be an error function and by convention we'll be having a lot of couple of fields over here so first field is this second field will be our arguments object then we have a context and let's see what do we have inside our context so ctx I'm gonna just name it and we have args and we have a comma and give it a class over here uh, give uh, give it a console statement so we are going to console log our ctx that will be our context then i'm going to copy this paste it again args and i'm going to say args and for now i'm going to return something dummy dummy so let's say first name something something we these are not nothing uh, last name so currently we have we don't need to do anything over here this are just dummy data and later we'll get rid of them but I just want to explore what's inside the context after when we apply our as authenticated middleware uh, not the middleware directive on this thing so we are more interested into looking what we are getting from our that class that we exported from there. So now if I go that our server has no issues, no errors running. And in our playground, this must be reloaded and we have already appended one token there. So our query get authenticated user profile. And this, in this, I'm just gonna say auth uh, user profile, and I wanna just get back first name and the last name because those are the thing, only things that we are sending back from there. And let me run that, get authenticated user profile. So as I run that, whatever I'm getting, this has nothing to do with the data, but I just wanted to console log the statement. So in our let's see what do we have in our context as well as in our this thing so arguments are empty because we haven't passed anything there from our playground we haven't passed any kind of data so that's fine with us but in context you can see that our is authenticated and is you authenticated users there as well as our post model as well as the user models there so for the authenticated user that's already existing in the context and now we just want to return this instead of doing anything. And this user is just because appended here just because and we are getting into the context because we initially we provided into that context here. So this authenticated user we up we extracted from the, we extracted the token from our uh, from our this uh, request headers and then we found one user then appended that user inside our context so now we can just simply instead of doing all this crap here we can just return from here ctx.user right and we can send that 
and instead of that I can destructure a bit even I'm not interested in arguments at all and I'm just getting from the context I'm just pulling out my user so if, uh, if it's as a single line written statement so we can get rid of those curly braces too so earlier it was written something like that return user it will be something like that but since it is a single line return statement so we can get rid of these curly braces too and we can get rid of this semicolon and this will work just fine so now if I go ahead and create click here authenticated user profile you're getting my first name last name if I write ID field and I run this query we are getting authenticated users ID too so let me quickly check if uh, if what what happens if we are just gonna reduce the time of our token uh, expiry as well as issued app token uh, timings so let me get into the user function and I'm gonna quickly copy this line and I'm gonna comment it paste it again and let's make it for like five uh, ten seconds okay and I'm gonna put a console log statement over here so console console.log token issue time and we'll pass this token issue time new date standard date object will be there so I'm gonna copy this save it okay and in our authentication middleware in our middleware's directory what I'm gonna do once we are done token access time and let's save it for now so we have these two type of console log statements so it is issuing just the date of that moment when the token was accessed to find that user from the database and this is the time when the token was issued so I'm gonna go to my server and now I can see that token access time is there so now at to my playground I'm gonna get rid of this token and what I'm gonna do we are gonna authenticate this user again so get authenticated user profile authenticate user and now we get that token and we get that token time token issue time we have this here so now if I go ahead and get a, a get, call this query again because this was a protected route and this uh, this token has 20 seconds of time so if I keep on doing that we get that we get that we get that we get that as soon as this 20 second time passes it will automatically knock the user out and if I go here token access time we have the token access time okay I think in our RTS and our type definition user function we made it 20 seconds and now you can see like okay I forgot to access it differently I didn't want it to X <laughs> what I wanted to show you is something token x token is being accessed all the time okay I forgot to have, uh, change the token actually so I'm gonna authenticate the user with the new token and from here including our BR token I'm gonna copy our token and I have to replace this token so paste it and now you can see we get our token access time token issue time so we just keep on track for this 20 seconds And after this stop that means our token is expired so we can also catch that here we are getting a token expiry from here and this will definitely gonna come inside this one so in our catch token expires time expiry time so expiry time and let's reduce it to like let's for reduce this time of the token to 15 or 10 let's save it we are just making ensuring that our middleware is still working or not so I'm gonna authenticate this user and we got the new token back I'm gonna copy this token 
and change it to the new token and now let's keep on making that request so token issue time we have that token issue time token access time token access time token access time so after 10 seconds of time this will automatically expire that token and now you can see that we are after 10 seconds of time we started getting our token expiry time so if I just go ahead here and copy this 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 one copy I'm gonna go to my here I'm gonna quickly open a new browser uh, in a new tab and within that console statement let me quickly increase the font new date pass our date which we got there so this will give me this date issue equal to this and expiry we have equal to new date object and we'll grab one of the date from there and we'll paste it there so to token issue then the to token expiry so by this time we were just accessing that token and after that we just got our token expire so after 10 seconds of time I'm gonna copy that actually not here access time and the issue time so I'm gonna copy one of them here and then in our browser console I'm gonna paste that so we have this expiry and this issue so expiry minus issue and we get exactly 9 to 97 milliseconds so this is as a millisecond and if we divide by like a 10 so it will be roughly around 9.2 seconds and that was a length of a token token issue time so within 10 seconds that token got expired and after that it logged out the user so no longer user is able to access this with that token again and this is not this is no request which I'm making this is the request which is being made constantly made by this Apollo Express uh, Apollo playground which we have so that's how it works and now I'm gonna get quickly replace it back with our a day time limit and I'm gonna get rid of this line so now we have the issue at token so this means our protection of these routes are working fine and as well as also we are getting our user from the uh, we are also getting our access user as well as our directives are also working so with that all set now it's time to go and get started with our post model so before that we will go to our terminal and clean it up all database so whatever the data we have inside I want to clean it up and also before doing going to my database cleanup we want to get rid of this console statement that we created even in our user functions uh, as well as in our auth middleware so I'm gonna get rid of this one and this line too so that means we are good to go and also gonna get rid of this token header that we got it from there and also going to my console and if I show D is show collections all right we have post and the users so I'm gonna quickly drop this one so DB drop drop database function and as I do that we have dropped that database so now if I try to log in from there and we don't have any user inside our database so if I authenticate the user we don't have any user there so if I show show if I show DBs uh, we have no more that post GQL app DB available here so now let's go and create our other stuff and let me quickly close everything here and we'll start working in our post model first so that we can open author field and in here I'm gonna add another field called author so here I'm gonna reference that the author of the field author of that post who has created here we created that post we'll refer that so we'll simply say type and that will be schema mod types dot object ID types dot object ID so this will be referring so with the keyword ref and this will refer to users collection so let me quickly save that and now we have a author field to to there
and with the help of our ish token we can get that author in our context author of that to author of that after author of that post in our context so who is ever gonna write that so first of all that is a protected route and if anyone goes inside our post so this is already authenticated so we need to have a token first to access this thing and then we can access the user from the context and then append that you use that information in order to uh, set the state of this author while creating a post so let's quickly see in the action how we can do that so this is fine we don't need to touch anything in here in the resolver but all I need to change this type of the post and we can simply say that author and this will be of a type user and that cannot be null basically so this user which we have defined here and since they are made, they are working together with the help of uh, in a same with the help of this base definitions so they can share the properties with each other and if I do that and as I go to this GraphQL payload so inside that if I, this should have already refreshed and if I write author field you can see that we have access to ID of the author first name of the author last name of the author email of the author as well as the as well as the what do we say avatar URL so now we have this thing but currently we don't have any post not even our user inside our database so let me go quickly go ahead ahead and create a user so Nandy Mandy and test one two three is our this and this this would just work fine for us so now I'm gonna quickly run this register a new user and we get a bearer token so I'm gonna copy this token gonna paste that over here and now we'll create that author uh, author field also there so for that basically what I'm gonna do from our this docs I'm gonna copy this this field called uh, mutation or the create new post so I'm gonna copy everything from here I'm gonna get inside that paste it over there and now we will pass in our query variables we have a title so this is a post one because we don't have any data inside that then we have a content this is the sample content for the post one and then we have a featured image so currently we don't have any image I'm just gonna pull in from here uh, let me quickly close this jargon tab and we'll go to Apollo server Express and we'll extract one image URL from there let me copy this this looks nice just like however I have written this code so copy image address inside here I'm gonna paste that URL and before saving that to the post what we need to do inside our this post JS uh, post resolver actually not here post definition not not in the post definition but the post resolver we need to uh, while creating that post we need to access the request user so we can get it from the context since we have already seen that part inside our user JS how we were fetching that user from the context with if he have the authentication key, authentication token then we are sending back that user so in the same way we can access that user here too and this will post dot create and also I'm gonna so now I'm gonna spread this whole thing here like so whatever are the values available inside the new post and then in the author field uh, that those values will come here and in the author field what I'm gonna look for is user dot underscore ID so whatever we have as the ID of this context user who is using this request and that will be autumn with that all set we'll good to go with our use author so now if I go and create this request and we already have that authentication token which we just issue here inside our headers so from this token we are just gonna get our authenticated user and we can just create that post so now if I run this create this post 
and now we can see that title here everything is here but one more problem is there it is simply returning the result which will be having a field of author so how are we gonna get the author from here because we have an author po this will return a type of post and post also have an author field inside that so that's now what we're gonna look into that and we will simply check the mongodb docs so initially it took me quite a bit to figure out uh, but you can get it simply on the mongodb i look for this keyword on the google like how to populate mongo's object and this will give you go to the documentation and there's a function called exec populate we can populate after on that mongodb population so firstly we are finding that and then we are just appending and actually this is not gonna be thing um, I have to look something else some other keyword so I just typed into Google's and most of the things just happened with a quick cake walk object after actually there's a function called exec populate something like that uh, this exec populate and we can always look into here so story that model and everything is created we have a story one author ID that and that story that author now once we are just done with the creating a population then we are just gonna look for that here so we can populate at any point of time to a object anything and currently we have that result store here so what we can do firstly he's, he's finding one and then he's populating with the author but this is not gonna work I already already tried this thing but this didn't work for me so what I'm gonna do this is the story and then in this one I will look for someone somewhere here only around I found that I know how to populate that but I am looking for not this one populating an existing document so I'm looking for this one populated if we have that person we are populated stories and then exec populate so this is the function which we are gonna run here so this is the result and in the callback we have the that post and this will be an asynchronous task because it's again gonna back to the database and then populate all the fields so populate and in that I'm, I'm gonna populate author so currently that author has the ID in here and now with the help of that ID we'll execute that population so we can call this function from here that called exec populate let me quickly increase the font size and everything so this function I'm gonna copy and once we are done writing our uh, our this object we can populate and we can always send that back so let me quickly show in the database so I say show collections users and the post we have one user one post so db dot post dot find dot pretty we have one post and inside that we have an author so this is the field of the user who has created the post so now I'm gonna go ahead and create another post so inside a query variable to post to and let me just make this request and also I'm gonna get back our ID of the post title and the author and from that author I want a name last name first name and then the username also and also the ID so now if I run this query we'll get back our author back so that's how it is working but if I get rid of this this won't work at all so this is post 2 and if I check inside the database we have we might be having now two two posts so one and the second one post two and post one that's here 
So with that all set, now it's time to go and provide the access control here too. And instead, the, instead of finding by ID and update, find one and update. We'll look for that find one and update and we'll pass our query object. So we are looking for the ID with the ID, whatever we have passed inside that. And also now we are gonna look for our author. So if, even if the user has our access key, and also I'm gonna look for that user. I'm gonna look for author, and that should be equal to user.id.toString function. So once we are done with that, this is gonna return a post, but if that author is not there or that post is not found, we are gonna throw the, a new error. This part is okay with us and even this part is fine. So I'm gonna use Apollo error again here. So I'm gonna bring import from Apollo Server Express, Apollo error, and now I'm gonna access that error property over here. So for that, I'm gonna trap everything inside the try and cache block, catch error, then dhrow throw new Apollo error, and within that, error that message, so whatever the message we have, and we'll give it a 403 or 403 that is a forbidden request or an authenticated request. Uh, let's make it for oh, 400 and then we are going to wrap that if not res edited post so if this query fails at some point of time let's say if we have a correct id and we found that post but the user who was accessing this post is not uh, the mass uh, not the author of that post then he cannot edit that post so that means it will be null and then we'll throw our new error and that error will be unable to edit the post and this error will be thrown out then caught here and then we'll send back a standard Apollo error object back otherwise we'll return back the edited post so that's how we are working with this one and now with the same thing we will do it over here that is we are gonna say user and we'll do the same part if we don't have any post we firstly we are gonna wrap everything inside a try catch block and we'll pass our error throw new apollo error new apollo error and in that error.message we are passing that message out and then I'm going to put everything here back if everything goes fine this will execute us and find by id instead of the find by id find one and update we are going to find one and delete we are going to use that find one and delete and again this will take the object so the query will be again id will be set to this id and then our author will be set to user dot id id dot to string function and this user is coming from the context again now let me save it it will automatically format it and let me copy this line so if that is null so that means we don't have that post back so deleted post unable to delete the post and we'll throw this error out from there so this is how we are just gonna protect our post so that no one can edit others post while we can do all all school so cool stuff here so we are done and now we can delete our post too so I think we already deleted that post but let me quickly create another user real quick so with that username one password is fine hotmail this is test one okay I'm gonna create a new user we have a to user there 
and now I'm going to use his access token in order to create that post. Copy, append that token here, and now I'm going to create a post here with a title inside query variables. Post to instead of post two, this will be post three. Sample content of post three. And that's basically it about, let's create a new user. And now you can see that we have Nandy Mandy one. So if I could fetch all the posts for now, and our auth get all posts, we see we cannot represent a value of buffer, something, something, something went wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's basically because what is happening behind the scene is simply in our get all post we haven't found that thing so we have to populate it to dot and we'll populate it author author field and this is very pretty straightforward and this is refreshing so we cannot be read and once we are our server is ready now we can try that query and now if we see that we have name of the author with that so we have these many posts so three posts this one was created by uh, let me put the username too because name is pretty much confusing now let me get rid of other fields so I think that email should also just work fine for us and I don't want avatar image to written back and let's go ahead and create uh, get all the posts and now you can see this post was created by Nandy Mandy this one was also created by Nandy Mandy, but this one was created by Nandy Mandy one. So now, if I try, currently I'm logged in with this one. I have this header of uh, this log in with this one. But if I try to delete the post of Nandy Mandy, we cannot. So we can, in order to demonstrate that, I'm gonna quickly go and copy one post by a delete. And gonna copy this. And in our playground, I'm gonna paste that. And in a query variables, uh, I will look for ID field. So let's try deleting this Nandy. Currently, I'm authenticated with this Nandy Mandy one. And let's try to delete this post, which was created by Nandy Mandy two. I'm gonna copy it, pass that ID over here, and delete by post ID. Unable to delete the post, and also we are getting that status code. So code is internal server error. Let's see what the error is there. If we have any error in the console and that there's no error inside the console. So what we can do instead of that, throw Apollo error. Um, we have that ID here. ID. And that's ID to a string. Let's check what we are getting. So console dot log error delete error. And let's save it. I'm trying to do that so I cannot be reached, so it is automatically restarting my server delete that post by ID and now you can see we have getting that error and now delete unable to delete the post and let's check what are we getting inside our this post object so we also put a console log statement deleted posts so we are looking if we are getting anything here or it's breaking somewhere here so now again it is refreshing and we'll get into the console we are getting null so basically what I'm checking here is like I'm throwing out the error if that is null that means we are not able to delete that post okay just a second let me check this thing if I am thinking there's any issue issue with this thing console.log our user ID object so basically we are what we are looking into that and still server cannot be reached 
delete that and we have that ID so that means everything is working fine we don't have to worry about but now if I go ahead and fetch all the posts so let me quickly authenticate with my other user that is Nandi Mandy password was fine so I'm gonna log in and get that token first so I'm gonna authenticate the user and I'm gonna copy his token and let's try deleting his post with the uh, with his token so I'm gonna rename that token back paste it and let's ensure that everything is working fine and they shouldn't throw any kind of error and your post is deleted so that's that post belonged to Nandy Mandy one that's why we can delete that post now and you can see that deleted uh, here we are getting that ID and we are fetching that post so everything is working fine here so we can also get rid of these console log statements and same thing will happen in our updated update a uh, find one find one and update so basically I made a typo so it will be a find one and update and find one and delete so these are the mongo standard functions and with that all set we are good to go with our post and one more thing without before getting into anything we have to populate these fields also so populate and actually we can use that standard whatever we have created at the bottom so I'm gonna copy this part here paste it and instead of this result this will be our post and then we will populate our author field so let me quickly check inside our uh, this part of all of playground that we have and let me quickly get a post by uh, ID so I can go to my standard post query and then get a post by ID we'll copy this query we already have that ID but we don't have that post because that post is already deleted but if I execute cannot read the populate of null so we'll look for that and we have to handle that over here so currently it was returning a null object because that that ID was already deleted so what I'm gonna do quickly cut this and trap in our try catch block and we are gonna catch that error and we'll throw new Apollo error and then that post not actually we'll simply cache that error dot message and we'll create our custom message so if we have if that post is null that means that post is not defined then we can throw that throw a new error and that error will be simply post not found And let's quickly check that out again retry this thing and now seeing post not found our message is there post not found the same thing will happen over here too that null then we are just throwing that out unable to edit the post unable to delete the post and that's how we're gonna do it so let's quickly and check if our author fields and everything is added to this part so we'll look author and let me email and username with just to follow fine for now so let me get all the post so we have these posts let me do post inside that let me copy this ID and replace with this new ID get post by ID and we are getting our post from that so with that all set we are almost done with our access control we did a lot of cool stuff using our image uploader and in the next video we'll start looking how we can handle the pagination stuff on the server side so basically we will be installing another package that's called mongoose paginate version 2 and the homework for you guys is just to go ahead and read the documentation from the node uh, npmjs.org because reading documentation will make your uh, knowledge very strong in when you're getting into this field and the only power comes as from the reading the documentation while you're while you're developing the codes so thank you guys and hope i see you guys in the next video and that's it for this video